There is a fifth dimension beyond that which is known to man. It is a dimension as vast as space and as timeless as infinity. It is the middle ground between light and shadow, and it lies between the pit of man's fears and the summit of his knowledge. This is the dimension of imagination. It is an area which we call the Twilight Zone. <laughs> Welcome to Pirate's Liar, gents. What's your poison? Pirate's Liar? Doesn't your sign say Pirate's Lair? It was supposed to say that, but that's what happens when you hire a sign painter that can't spell. Are you here to complain about our sign, or are you here to shuck and drink? He's more finicky than me. Yeah, I won't complain if you bring me a pitcher of beer. Mm, now, I can see you're a big boy. But are you going to share, or is that all just for you? <laughs> just for me. And for you? But why don't you just have the painter fix the sign? It's funnier this way. It is? Why? You know to the Everglades? Sort of. I told you, he's finicky. He's a, he's a documentary filmmaker. He does the thinking. I'm his cameraman. I do the hauling and shooting. So, you're a working man, and that's why you're doing all the talking, too. So you can get to shucking and drinking. Yep. So, what's your movie about? The plight of the Everglades? I got a feeling you're the sensitive sort. Shall I bring you a Shirley Temple? <laughs> yeah, and put an umbrella in it. <laughs> Thank you very much for blowing my cover. What do you mean? No one knows you're here. I'm here to get a story. Now that all the locals know I'm a reporter, everybody's gonna clam up. <laughs> That's a good one. What's so funny? Clam up. We're in a clam bar. You do have a sense of humor. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Surprise myself sometimes. Now, what's so funny about Pirate's Liar? Would you trust a pirate to tell the truth? No. The sign painter made a mistake that was the truth when he called this place Pirate's Liar. All pirates are liars. They have to be so nobody finds their buried treasure. If that's true, then why does our police map have a treasure map on it? Your placemat has a treasure map on it, so you'll have the directions on how to find this place in case you want to come back. Here's your Shirley Temple. Yep. Here's your pitcher of beer. Any other questions? Yeah. What smells like fish? Me. I'm a fishmonger. I do a lot of shucking. Personally, I find that smell refreshing on a woman. Pirate's Liar, an out-of-the-way clam bar on the edge of the Everglades, a battleground for one of nature's last great struggles for survival, an environment as beautiful as it is dangerous, as filled with treasures as it is with death, and as breathtaking as the smell of fish. Documentary filmmaker Richard C. Avendon and his one-man crew Mongo Brewster are about to begin a potentially prize-winning documentary as they begin an expedition deep into unexplored regions of the Everglades and the Twilight Zone. Here's your bill. Who gets it? I do. I'll be outside heating some fresh air when you're ready. Are you Charlene? Yep. What's this phone number under your name? That's my phone number for the big guy, just in case he loses his treasure map. Catch more flies with honey than vinegar. That was one great dinner. And uh, thanks for the wonderful service. And thank you for the wonderful tip the big guy told you to leave. So, what are you boys looking for? Uh, he's looking. I'm just carrying the baggage for him. You afraid of me? No, I just, uh, just don't know where to begin. Well, I'll give you a hint. Just take a second and listen. 
Uh, what am I listening to? Nature. It's out there calling your name. Listen. Hear that clicking sound? Yeah. Insects? Lizards? Anyway, it's frogs crushing insects' bodies. They crush those hard little shells and bony spines by the million an hour. Then, the snakes eat the happy, fat little frogs. As they slither off, the birds of prey swoop down out the sky and eat the snakes. When the birds get too full to fly, they land on a log floating in the water, which usually turns out to be a nasty gator, which gobbles up the bird. Gators are sloppy eaters, and they leave little pieces of the bird fall to the bottom of the water, which feeds the clams which you just ate. Mmm, mm, good. What you are listening to is Mother Nature perpetuating a vicious cycle that you want to save with your little documentary. Was that what you were thinking when you came here? I wasn't quite envisioning it like that. I was thinking more of... What was that? A big old bull alligator just got lucky. You want to go down there and tell him don't eat the pretty birdies? You're going to ask him if he'd like a Shirley Temple to wash it down? Stop! I know just what you're doing. You're trying to discourage me from making my documentary. You're trying to keep people away from here to protect this swamp. Why would I do that? Yeah, why would you do that? Because you're a pirate's liar. You're lying to scare me to save your restaurant. This is where your clams are. Your clams are your treasure, and you don't want anyone to have them except you. That's right. Because they are so finger-licking good. Can't blame a girl for trying, can you? Hey, don't throw your cigarettes in the water. You, you, you'll contaminate it. How do you contaminate a swamp? You know, I'm getting that out of there right now. Don't say I didn't warn you. Still think I'm a liar? Finally gonna tell me what we're looking for. The Bewinja Pedi. The what? There was an Indian tribe that lived in the Everglades centuries ago. And? They disappeared. Well, if they disappeared, how are we gonna find them? I don't think they're gone. I think they're still out there. Now that sounds like a story right out of the Pirate's Liar. Well, you're right. The last sighting was reported at that bar by my brother 17 years ago. It was the last place he was seen alive. What happened to him? Well, that's what I'm hoping we'll find out. getting late. I can hear the toads eating the bugs faster. Let's find a spot to set up camp. Well, that looks like a nice spot over there. I was hoping for a holiday inn, but I guess a dry spot will have to do. Get a shot of me in the sunset. There. All right, are you going to say anything? No, I want some brooding shots. Yeah, pensive stuff to show my inner feelings. All right, your nose is shiny. You want me to powder you down? Nah, real is good here. Yeah, I want me to look like I'm suffering on my first leg of the journey. Capture me ignoring the suffering because I care so deeply. <laughs> sure. Uh, move a little to the right. Like this? Yeah, that's good. Now, care more. How's this? You look constipated. Well, how about now? <laughs> That's clear. 
cliche ennui. Maybe you didn't suffer enough today. Let's just forget it. The moment isn't right. Let, let, let's set up camp. Don't worry, I'll do my share. Don't be sarcastic. What do you mean? Well, that pathetic little voice you just did, under your breath. I didn't say anything. Well, there it is again. It's coming from that itty-bitty hole in the dead cypress. But this hole? Hello? Too small for a person to fit through. Please put string into the hole so I can grab it. I'm stuck. How about a shoelace? Uh, uh, what's a shoelace? Where's she been? In a hole. Take off your shoelace and drop it in. jerky from my backpack before she starves to death. Do you see how small she is? How's she gonna eat jerky? We, we, you know, we need baby food. Wait, wait, uh, you know what? I, I've got some yogurt. I'm dying. Help. Here, 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 here. Here's some, uh, here's some yogurt. Eat. Take some jerky. That's what I figured. Indians invented jerky. You're crazy. Jerky was invented by a second generation German guy in Milwaukee. I, I did a documentary about it. of youth? It's for real? Yeah. You live forever, but you get smaller. Everything is a trade-off. Give me jerky. The Winjapiri likes jerky. How long have you been in that tree? Seventeen years. Each year the tree grew a new ring around me. I thought I was going to be crushed. I was saved by a brave man who looked like you. Wait a minute. That was my brother. Your brother was a good man. A very good man. He saved me from certain death. 
He sacrificed his life to save me. And now you have saved me. Are you a good man too? Hey, boss, we're losing daylight fast. It's getting too dark to shoot. Quickly, make a fire. The glades come to life at night and death stalks from the shadows. Hide me. I am bite size. I'll set up a tent and hide her. You, you make the fire. Sora, 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 Sora. Is that an Indian prayer? No, I'm thirsty. Your brother gave me soda. I liked it. Do you have soda? Give me soda, 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 soda. All right. Now we have campfires all around us. We should be safe. This is like sleeping in a zoo at night. Except the animals are loose and we're in a cage and can't close the door. How did she survive out here? Well, the Lone Ranger always asks Tonto what to do. Indians always seem to have a sense of how to get in touch with nature. But she's dead asleep. She's full of jerky and soda. I don't think she's going to be in touch with anything tonight. Maybe we better put her between us to keep her safe. Good idea. Good night. Good night. We're still alive. Where's the little princess? Still under the covers. What did you put around her? Nothing. Whoa. There's something pretty big under there. Yeah. Um, let me grab a stick. You pull off the covers. All right, on the count of three. One, two, three. What the? Huh? Where am I? Huh. Who are you? Biwinja Piri. You're a full-size woman. Yeah, a, a beautiful full-size woman. Mongo, get the camera. She grew. Yep. stand next to her. Am, am I in frame? Okay. <clears throat> this is the two-inch tall woman we filmed last night. Now she is taller than me. Wait. How do we know you aren't someone else? I still have his shoelace. Yeah, it's not good enough. Like, you could have mugged the little princess and took it. Okay, okay, okay wait a minute. Um, all right, I've been careful not to mention my brother's name to you. What is it? Your brother's name was Eugene. Oh, that's right. God, this is insane. You grew to six foot overnight? Are you going to continue to grow? No. Each time I emerge from hibernation, I rehydrate. And I always grow back to the same size I was before I was enchanted. And then what? Then, a member of my tribe arrives to equip me for my journey, during which I pay respects to all my ancestors. <gasps> Look! <laughs> Charlie! Charlie! Oh, Charlie! Now what? What is that? I think it's one of those airboat things. Yeah, well, it's heading right toward us. Hello, Princess! Film this. He's wearing a Hawaiian shirt. Film it! Looks like it just came from a Jimmy Buffett concert. Welcome! Uh, are you a visitor from the past? No. I'm Charlie. 
I see you found Boinji Pedi. Ch -ch -ch Charlie, Ch -ch Charlie, did you bring my talisman? Yeah. And I brought some carry art from Pirate's Lyre. Hey, big guy. Charlene, sweet on you. Uh, no, she gave me a map. She also gave you a lobster sandwich and some calamari. <laughs> me, she charges. You get it free, big guy. Here. Who are you, and, and why are you here? I told you, my name is Charlie. There's not much work for our Indians, so I make deliveries for Pirate's Liar because <laughs> I know the glades. Yeah, I gotta go. Ch -ch -ch Charlene, keep me on a short rope. Hey, wait! Wait, come back! What is going on here? We practically kill ourselves traipsing into the middle of the Everglades to find a legendary princess. Instead, we find a two-inch tall glutton who's stuck in a tree and then grows six feet overnight. Then an Indian, who delivers carry out to the middle of nowhere in an airboat, gives her a magic talisman and then takes off without warning and strands us. And this all seems mighty strange to me. Seventeen years ago, my brother died out here. I want some answers. Is there any more jerky left? No! Tell me how my brother died. The Everglades claimed him, just like they have claimed me. We are both part of the Everglades forever. Yeah, but my brother is dead, and you are alive. This is because the Everglades chose to give me the gift of eternal youth. But they also have taken my life. <laughs> what does that mean? My tribe is gone. My parents, grandparents, brothers, sisters, husband, and friends died centuries ago. I am eternally alone, struggling each day to remain alive. Your brother, like you, sought to find me. I never asked for that or wished for that. He discovered my hiding place and learned how I could hibernate and live off my own body like a bear, but much longer. I filmed a special about bears. We roused one from hibernation and it wasn't such a good idea. Leave a sleeping dog lie. What are you saying? My, my brother woke an animal? Don't move. Freeze, boss. Durak dura sanua puta junja! Whoa. That's something National Geographic won't believe. I got some great shots of that action. What was it? A snake? Look behind you. Ah! Oh. That thing is four feet long. How, how did you kill it? My magic talisman. It keeps me safe. Well, you didn't have one when we found you. Just before I hibernate, my body absorbs the chemicals from the talisman to keep me alive. Will you help me reach my hiding place for the next 17 years? Can we film it? Yes. As long as you never reveal where I am. Deal! Let's go! We are almost there. But it is too dangerous to travel at night. We should camp here. All right. All right. Uh, I'll pitch the tent. You, you two find firewood. And be careful. She's got the talisman. We'll be fine. You be careful. Oh, hey, hey, 
There's some dead brush over there. That'd be good for starting a fire. What did you think when you first saw us? <laughs> you reminded me of my husband. A tall, strong warrior. You didn't think I looked like a pack mule? No. I found you attractive. What was your husband like? <sighs> His hair was like silk, but black as a crow. His body was supple, and he moved like a jaguar. His eyes were soft and warm, and when I looked into them, I found him irresistible. Wow. I wish I had eyes like that. Look into my eyes. Huh? I see. I see. Irresistible beauty. A beautiful, soft, mossy clearing. Close your eyes and turn around. Now open them. What do you see? A beautiful, soft, mossy clearing where the dry brush was. How did you do that? This is my home, and it is my time. Come lay down with me. What? Tonight, it is 17 years since I walked the earth. But tonight, it is also 400 years since I kissed my husband. Please, mate with me. Uh, uh, um... Oh, boy. Uh, oh, okay. Princess? Where are you, Princess? I'm over here, by the tree. What are you doing over there? You fell asleep. I didn't want to wake you. Hey, uh, I don't know how to say this, but, uh, don't tell Richard what we did. If that is your wish. I don't want to hurt your feelings, but he, he just wouldn't understand. Then he shall never know. Harum dara dum sumanu watum. You just hold your talisman and say a few words and that's it? Yes. Relax. I just turned our bed of moss into a bed of quicksand. Our secret will be buried forever. What? Well, hey! No, hey, hey! I'm sinking! Now you will be part of our homeland forever. You'll always be here with us. No. With me. No! Help! Help! No! Jabiri. Where's Mongo? Mongo drowned. In quicksand. What? Nature claimed him. What? Couldn't you help him? I tried. But there was nothing I could do. Well, now what? You and I 
become the pack mules and continue our journey. He would not have wanted us to quit. He knows how important this is to both of us. I must honor my ancestors. You must complete your documentary and dedicate it to your brother and your friend. Put out the fire. Let us travel to my hiding place right now. A canoe is hidden close by for our journey. Leave everything in the canoe. You will be leaving shortly. You don't want to keep anything here with you? You have given me everything I need. What? What's wrong? My shoulders are cramping. You must have paddled too much. Turn, turn around. Let me, let me massage your shoulders. Oh, it hurts so much. I'll try to be gentle, but you got a lot of swelling. Did, did something bite you? Two huge welts are forming on your back. Oh, oh, oh no. The skin is splitting. Good. Good. Your your skin splitting is good? Yes. That means it won't hurt any more soon. This happens every time I reach full size. Oh. Oh. This has happened before? Yes. I hate it, but I love it. You, you mean you mean like no no pain, no gain? No. Watch. This is really something. You 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 grew wings. Yes. Yes. Aren't they beautiful? <sighs> yes, absolutely. They're, it's one of the most amazing things I've ever seen. I'm so glad we had moonlight so you could see everything. In moments, I must ascend to there. See? The crook of that ancient cypress? Yes. Seventeen years is a long time. What will you dream of? Meeting someone as kind and caring as you or your brother when I awake seventeen years from now. Without your help, I would never have survived. Quickly, set up the camera. The moonlight is perfect. Set the camera up so the moonlight will shine on me as I ascend to the top of the tree. Imagine how beautiful it will be with the moonbeam sparkling on my gossamer wings. Yeah, it would be an incredible thing to see. We must hurry. But before I go, I must do one last thing. What? I must have a final meal. Something that will last me 17 long years. Huh. Huh. Princess, I... Huh. I just had a terrible thought. My... My blood kind of turned cold. Why? You're not gonna eat me, are you? <laughs> eat you? <laughs> this is a pretty, pretty far-fetched idea, huh? <laughs> Let me put your mind at ease. No, I am not going to eat you. 
Ugh, I feel pretty stupid now. <laughs> Silly me. I just wanted some more jerky and a soda. I love soda, 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 soda. <laughs> that I can give you. Here. Jerky and soda. It's a special treat I won't have for another 17 years. As I told you, I will survive on my talisman. Start the camera. <laughs> okay. All right, and uh, <clears throat> we're rolling. Is the moonlight perfect? Yes. Look, a flock of birds is flying in front of the moon. Oh, how beautiful. That is a sign that it is time for me to go. Wow. This is awesome. Good goodbye. Goodbye. I'm so sorry. I thought you were going to eat me. Don't be silly, my love. I saved you. For my children. What? Those weren't birds crossing the moon, Richard. Like a locust, I reproduce once every 17 years. And those are my hungry babies coming to eat you. Ah! Uh, ah! Uh, ah! Uh! When tourists visit the Everglades, they see signs that read, Don't Feed the Animals, and they laugh as they recall disasters they have witnessed in the movies. They can't imagine something like that happening in the real world to real people like them. But like all clever predators, Mother Nature is very patient and has a special way of protecting what is hers. And every once in a while, tourists take a step or two off the beaten path and go beyond the boundaries of nature to discover something new and different. So if you do visit the Everglades and see a sign that says, don't feed the animals, heed its warning because Mother Nature always encourages her pets to bite the hand that feeds them in the Twilight Zone. Bewingipedia, starring Sean Astin with Stacey Keach as your narrator, was written for The Twilight Zone by Joby Cerny. Heard in the cast were Christopher Sullivan, Elizabeth Lido, Teron Patton, Oksana Fedonishin, and Roger Mueller. The producers of The Twilight Zone wish to thank CBS Enterprises and the Rod Serling Estate for making this series possible. This copyrighted radio series is produced by Carl Amari and directed by Joby Cerny for Falcon Picture Group. Sound design, custom Foley effects, recording, and editing are done in the Cerny American Sound to Picture Theater by sound designers Bob Benson and Tim Cerny. Music for the Twilight Zone is provided by CBS and American Music Incorporated New York. To learn more about the Twilight Zone radio dramas and to download episodes, including three free episodes on our homepage, visit our official website at twilightzoneradio.com. Doug James speaking. <laughs>